Whether you're setting up your Mac for the first time or you want to optimize your digital setup for calm and focused productivity, this is how to make your Mac a productive and minimal masterpiece. The Apple ecosystem already has design and simplicity at its heart, but I don't know about you, it's still all too easy, I think, to let your files, desktop, and apps get out of hand. Before you know it, your digital world is just an overwhelming mess. Hi, it's Simon again, and in this video, I'll show you how, in just a few steps, you can make your MacBook a more minimal and beautiful place to work. From organizing your files to customizing your dock and desktop, these are the methods, settings, and great apps you should be using to make your digital space an absolute joy to work in. And thank you to, well, me and my minimal icons for sponsoring this video. Yeah. Now, before we get into the beautiful stuff, customizing your dock and your toolbar to look super clean, cool, right? We need to begin with the important bit, your files. Now, let's face it, most of us probably have an overloaded document folder, a messy Apple Notes app, and way too many files in our downloads folder that we just need to sort out. So take these three steps and you'll be calm, clear, and organized in no time. Here's how to do it. So we first need to set up a system to organize our documents in a way that's useful. Now you could do this in your documents folder, but my favorite place is actually to do it in iCloud, which is where I keep all of my items. Now I'm gonna create four master folders using Tiago Forte's digital organization method called Para. Now this has to be rule one and stage one of a minimalist organization system. Para stands for projects, areas, resources, and archives. I'll link some details below. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna remove any unneeded views in the sidebar. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna remove it. I don't actually need AirDrop there because I actually use something else to do that, which we'll look at in a moment. And remember, you can always minimize the sections like this to keep it super clean, like locations and tags. First, let's make the folders. I'm just gonna do Shift Command New or N. Projects. And what you can do is drag these up into your bar and they can sit under your iCloud drive. Now next we want to move the existing folders and files we have into the relevant areas. And while I do that, let's make sense of the power method. So projects, these are current things you are working on, usually with an end date. Areas, these are life areas, so broader umbrellas of your life that are less likely to have a start and end date like projects do. That might be things like family or work. Resources, this is where I wanna put my knowledge, documents, information, references that I want to be able to search through and reuse. Things like your accounts, important documents, even key bits of your own writing that you might want to reference again. And then archives, this is where you're gonna put anything that isn't needed anymore each time you do a bit of a spring clean. But as you go through your files, I reckon you should ask, should I just delete this or could it be a really useful thing to keep in the future? There are a couple of ways you could do this. You could do projects, areas, resources and archive for everything. I've set my areas link for everything that is an area in my life and then within each one I've added projects, resources and archives. So it's up to you. Now, I recommend downloading this fantastic toolbar app called Drop Zone 4. This is my most used app in the toolbar, and it's the quickest way I found to not only do things like airdrop to other devices, which is super useful as a creator, but also to send items to key places. You can add key folders, and then you can just drop things in for quick organization. For my bigger files around things like video editing and this kind of footage, I keep all of that coded up on hard drives off my device since I don't want them clogging up my computer or my online storage and I'm not going to need to look at these very often. So that's your digital declutter done for files. Next, it's time to clean up and minimize your desktop and dock. So this section kind of splits into two, the Mac settings you choose for your desktop and dock, and then secondly, consolidating cleaning out your apps to only have the essential tech you need. Why? Well, I think a clean and minimal workspace gives you a clear and focused mindset. So I wanna get rid of these and I wanna get this to disappear. For your dock, just click into here and click turn hiding off. So I'm just clicking right click and then turning hiding off there. Another way to do that is just to go into dock settings and you can do that by doing control space and then settings, go to desktop and dock 
and in here, automatically hide and show the dot there. I also want to go down and on show items, I want to turn these options off. And that then means that it won't show the items on the desktop. So when I clear this, we've now got a perfectly clean screen. So when you click on the screen now, you'll be still be able to see any widgets you've set up and items that you want to jump to. I also like to make sure I've got my hard drive linked there. If you right click on these and edit widgets, you can add widgets from anywhere. In fact, you can add them from your phone. So let's say we find YouTube, I could just drop this in and then I'm able to search YouTube. Next, I just opened uh, an Insta360 app because you can see here there's a little section for recent apps. So the next thing you might wanna do is go into your system settings, go to desktop and dock, and here you might want to turn off show suggested and recent apps in dock. So I'm gonna turn that off and now we'll see that that's stripped back to the basics of what was there. Next, what about your download stack? If you right click on this and go to folder, you can also, which I'll show you in a bit, customize just a folder view with an icon, and then you've got a nice clean downloads section. The other thing is you can do with this is adjust it so that it shows a grid when you click on it, but I'm a big fan of the fan. Nice. But next, I wanna do one more thing, which is go to settings, and if you go into appearance, you'll find accent color. Now, if you change this to, say, graphite, you can also make these little buttons even simpler if you love that black and white look, or you can just select a color. Let's clean up the toolbar. Now the toolbar can get cluttered very quickly. So I use this lovely little download, the Bartender app, and it's a great way to clean up that toolbar and simplify it. You can specify what shows and what is revealed when you hover over the bar, and I really like apps like Notion Calendar and Drop Zone that work really well with this and allow you to see things at a quick glance. Now, if you like the wallpaper that I'm using, we should take a little look at how you now update wallpapers. And I'm gonna show you how to make light and dark mode dynamic that aren't just the Apple standards. So I'm going to just click this for the moment. So we've just got a, a random cover and I'm gonna open up an app called Equinox. Download this for free and it allows you to create custom light and dark mode appearances depending on the different look. So I'm going to go for appearance, I'm going to browse and I'm going to find two backgrounds that we want to use which are light and dark modes and click open and then you can select which one is light and which is dark. Click create, it builds it, you can click set and just leave it as it is and there you go, it's dropped it into the system. If I now change to light mode, you'll see it in light mode. If I change to dark mode, you'll see it in dark mode. And if we set it to automatic, it will go to the automatic setting that it's on. So that's how you set yourself custom wallpapers. And if you want some recommendations of where to get great wallpapers, I recommend Free Picks. That's where I found some of mine. And also Unsplash is great, which I'm used to using in Notion. So we're gonna talk about reducing your tech stack and choosing the right apps to put in your dock. But first I wanna focus on my favorite feature, which is these custom icons that you can add. It's optional, but I really think it does a lot. Now I think this is a fantastic way to clean up and unify the aesthetic of your Mac dock. You should probably start by removing Launchpad. So we're gonna right click on it and click remove from dock. You can always refine that again later in the apps folder. And we're gonna do the same over here. This is my video player of choice. They just turn on when I need them. So again, I'm gonna right click and remove from dock on each of those. Custom icons, right click, click on options and show in finder and you'll see it. Then you can click Command I to bring up information. Next, you wanna find a custom icon. I'll show you where to get them in a moment. And I'm gonna drop it onto the icon and it updates it. Now, if you wanna delete it, put it back, you just delete on that page and it brings it back if you ever need to do that in the future. Now, it probably means though it's not updated here. If it's not opened, you can open it and it will update. But the best solution to this is right click, options, remove it from dock, then take the app again from your applications and drop it back in. And there you go, we've got a custom icon. But 
Where'd you get icons like this? Well, there are some nice websites like Icon Finder that I recommend, but I reckon this is the moment to tell you about these, the perfect minimal icon to use for this, my minimal icon packs. And in fact, these will allow you to customize your iPhone and iPad to match your system too. What they were originally designed for was customizing an iOS to create a distraction-free and minimal coherent design that I think looks and feels really awesome. It's also saved me hours from not scrolling on social media. So if you like the look of these packs, jump over to bettercreating.com where you can download various versions of them, including 192 icons in dark and light mode across key apps, including things like the Google Suite, Microsoft Suite, and some general shortcuts that will work for everything that you need. And I really like this, my latest physical buttons pack, a design with a nod to the wonderful designer Dita Rams, and there's even a Notion-specific pack with all the icons delivered in the same Notion colorways if, like me, you also organize your life on Notion. And you can find my full guide to customizing on iOS and iPad linked in the description below. So if you want to continue this minimal journey, you can. Thanks again to, well, me for sponsoring my video with these packs. Yeah, I need to let that joke go. Okay, so before we focus on the best Mac apps to add for a minimal setup, let me show you one more trick for the dock. On this dock, I've got this mail a light button, and when I click it, it opens up a login page to a website specifically for mail a light. In its own right, looking like an app. So, how did I do it? You need to open up Safari and find a web page that you want to use. Let's say it's my website, because why wouldn't you? You then click this button here, share, and you click add to dock. You can name it and it will get whatever icon comes with it. We're gonna add it. There's better creating. But now what you can do is, is update the logo. And I wanna do that for my Mailer Light logo. So I'm gonna do exactly the same process with this. Go to options, show in finder, control I, these are the applications we've created. I've done things like YouTube and Squarespace. And then it means within that view, I can do exactly the same thing I did before. Go in here, let's say it's the uh, mail icon, drop that in and reopening it, you'll then see that you've updated the logo. Next, it's time to ask what are the 20% of apps that you use regularly that we can simplify your dock down to? Remember, you can always use that command space function to find apps when you need to. So the essentials for me, I'm gonna start with Pixelmator Pro. I use this for graphic design and it's really fantastic on the Mac. This is OBS, as you can see, I've got a little sign because it's what I'm filming in at the moment. It's how I've set up this whole look, it's all baked in. These are my three big guns, the Notion suite, Notion to organize my entire life, uh, Notion Calendar and Notion Mail. That's actually only available at the moment in beta, but it's coming in 2025. But Notion is a brilliant place to organize everything in one place. So make sure you go and check out my videos on how I use it in my life operating system if you wanna learn more about how it can really be a great addition to your Mac ecosystem. So I really recommend checking out this. If I do option space, I've got Alfred. Alfred, Raycast, whichever way you look at it. There's a bunch of great tools within here, but one of my favorites has got to be snippets where you can create these responses uh, that are really super quick. So when I'm using this, what I will do is I'll go option space, snip, and then maybe say partnership, and I can paste the link to my partner's pack, a yes, no, and holding emails for sponsorship inquiries. One of my favorite little cheat apps that you should check out is Cheat Sheet for Mac. Now this app is a real lifesaver. I just hold down the command button and it will show me the shortcuts for whatever app I'm on. This is a really brilliant way to keep your workflow moving without getting bogged down by memorizing shortcuts. Now that is one super clean Mac setup, but it doesn't mean much unless you also master how to focus your work and your workspace to match it. So you've got two options to do just that. Watch this video next for discovering the essential strategies that actually help me manage my time and energy far more effectively, or watch this one next for the setup tips and choices for a beautiful place to work that I'm just loving with Mac. It would be awesome if you click my face to subscribe, turned on those bell notifications. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.